Hi, I'm Mark Schroeder at GSHC Surrogacy Agency, and today I'm speaking with attorney Sarah Cohen from Fertility Law at D2 Law. Sarah, first question, if a Canadian intended parent completes their surrogacy journey in the United States, how can they establish parentage for their child if they're a Canadian permanent resident or if they're a Canadian citizen? So as long as one parent is a citizen, it's actually very easy. So there used to be a law that made it a requirement that that citizen had to have a genetic connection to the child, but that was challenged as being unconstitutional a couple of years ago. So now, as long as one citizen of Canada is the legal parent of the child, the child is entitled to Canadian citizenship. There are certain exceptions to that, but the general rule is that that child should be a Canadian citizen or should at least be entitled to citizenship. A child who is born to a permanent resident of Canada is not entitled to citizenship um, and will have to be sponsored. And that's a different process. So, um, and for that, they definitely need an immigration lawyer. What documents are required to establish Canadian citizenship? There's a certain application that has to be filled out. We need a copy of the surrogacy agreement. We need the court order if there is a court order. We much prefer a post-birth order as opposed to a pre-birth order. So a lot of my clients who do surrogacy in places like California that have pre-birth orders also get a post-birth order because uh, from a Canadian perspective, we're much more comfortable with post-birth order. We are not signatories to the um, apostille, so we don't apostille our documents here in Canada. Um, we do require DNA testing, which only if there is a genetic connection is relevant. It's not relevant if there's not a genetic connection. Um, we also need a document proving certain things. Um, we need uh, the surrogate signing away her parental rights. We need a document from the clinic that this was done, surrogacy done through IVF. We need a document from the hospital that there are no outstanding medical bills and we need a birth certificate as well as we need the parents' uh, passport if they have uh, color copies, etc. Parents' birth certificate if they're born in Canada, not relevant if they weren't born in Canada, etc. As long as we have um, all those documents in order, we're able to bring an application. I do have to say something that I think is probably surprising to people is that it takes a long time for the application to birth. So it often will take at least a year for a child who's born to Canadian citizens but born abroad and through surrogacy, it often takes at least a year to get them their Canadian citizenship. That doesn't mean the child can't go back into Canada. They can go into Canada and stay there. Um, we've never had a problem with that and I don't anticipate us having any issue with that. Um, but you know, you're not, the child won't get a Canadian passport or be a Canadian citizen until usually about a year passes. And what documents will the intended parents need to cross the Canadian border with their child? As long as we have um, the passport and a birth certificate of the child, then we don't have any problems crossing the border. Are the documents for Canadian citizenship standardized or do intended parents need to obtain these documents themselves? So they're not standard format. So you're, most of my clients work with a Canadian lawyer who does helps them through this process. Uh, there is a standard citizenship application that must be filled out, um, but the actual documents that we need in general come, you know, they're not standardized. How can intended parents obtain a post-birth order and how long does this process usually take? So I've had uh, success with some lawyers who are used to dealing with international intended parents and even though they only typically might get a pre-birth order we've required them to get a post-birth order too and they've been able to do so it's definitely taken at least a couple of weeks uh, in our in our experience but i couldn't say do intended parents need to wait to re-enter canada until they have all these documents no it's easy enough to travel into canada because traveling between america and canada is very very simple getting the citizenship is what you need the post-birth order for what issues may prevent canadian intended parents from successfully bringing their child back to canada we know of some famous decisions that happened uh, not to children born in the united states but to children who are born um, I believe they were born in India, et cetera. Um, and this was before the law changed when there was a requirement for a genetic connection uh, to a Canadian citizen. We recognized 
egg donation, parentage through egg donation here in Canada. We recognize parentage through surrogacy here in Canada, other than in Quebec. Um, so really, like, there's no reason not to recognize parentage of uh, these parents, whether or not they have a genetic connection. So uh, now that we've changed the law, it's much, much easier. While the intended parents wait for the Canadian citizenship application to be processed, can their baby still receive provincial health care in Canada? So the baby can get um, health care. Technically, the child is under the custody of their parents who are entitled to provincial health care in Canada. They are also entitled to that provincial health care. If one or more intended parents have permanent residence status only in Canada, what options do they have? So in that situation, I'll tell you honestly, I refer to an immigration lawyer because that is beyond my fertility legal expertise, but I have an immigration lawyer I deal with very frequently, and that's who handles that situation. I know for a fact that the child's not entitled to citizenship, but can be sponsored by the permanent residents. And roughly how long is the current wait time for intended parents to start a surrogacy journey in Canada? In terms of what it looks like on the ground, I think the time you're waiting really depends agency by agency. So one agency that I think is excellent and does fabulous work, it really does take 18 months to two years to find a surrogate. And that's a very, very long time. Other agencies, I would say, are closer to about nine months, one year. But no situation that I know of can you literally just sign up with an agency and tomorrow you're going to have a surrogate. Or it happens, but extremely rarely. So that shouldn't be the expectation of anyone doing surrogacy in Canada. And my experience with my Canadian clients who have gone to the United States is they can find a surrogate faster. They just can. Is egg donation legal in Canada? Mm -hmm. It is legal to do egg donation in Canada, but similar to surrogacy, it's not compensated. So we reimburse egg donors and we have a list from Health Canada what we're allowed to reimburse them for. And if it's not on that list, we're not allowed to reimburse them for whatever it is that we would seek to reimburse them for. An egg donor has to be at least 18 years old or older. Something that is stronger in the United States than in Canada is access to egg donors in the sense that um, we have egg donors in Canada, but we're a smaller population and smaller number of donors. So, you know, it's totally doable. It's not like we're suffering in the sense like we can't find egg donors, but it's not the same kind of uh, numbers that you're looking at in the United States. If Canadian intended parents choose egg donation, do they have to disclose that their child is not genetically related to them? So in Canada, you can choose anywhere from anonymous, open ID, which is what we call open identification, or known donation. There is certainly a push towards a known donation. And I'll tell you that's where I'm most comfortable, but I have many clients who choose anonymous donation too. So there's nothing illegal about anonymous donation in Canada. It's perfectly legal, it's legitimate, it's doable, but there's definitely thoughts that people, many people, um, are concerned about what happens if a child has questions when they're older, etc. So a lot of people either go with known donors or choose the middle ground, which is basically when the child reaches the age of 18, they're entitled to get information if they want it about who the donor is. Um, I just think it's very important that people make educated decisions and don't feel they must choose one or the other, but have the opportunity to choose what's right for them. There's no registry. There's no one they have to advise that the child is not genetically related to them. You might want to tell your child's doctor in case there's, you know, for medical reasons. But other than that, no, there's no reason. If Canadian intended parents use all donor material and a gestational surrogate, Will that affect Canadian citizenship at all? Not anymore. So it would have before if we needed a genetic connection to the Canadian citizen intended parent, but we don't need that anymore as long as they are the legal parent, it recognizes the legal parent in the jurisdiction where the baby's born. What information is needed from the baby's genetic testing in order to obtain Canadian citizenship? I think really what they want to know is that also the baby's not genetically related to the surrogate. So that's also what they're looking for. And do these citizenship laws change if the intended parents used a sperm donor? In Canada, actually, we import something like 95% of our sperm from the United States because you can't pay donors in Canada. So we really 
stopped getting a lot of sperm donors in Canada, at least people who want to donate anonymously. People come to clinics and they say, this is my friend, my friend would like to donate for me, and we do that all the time. The law about who is a parent is different in every province. So some provinces have very strong laws that a donor is not a parent, and some are weaker. So Ontario and British Columbia, and now even Saskatchewan, have really the strongest laws in the country that a donor is not a parent, can't be a parent, etc. cetera. Um, and there's not a concern about that. The agreement is actually unenforceable, but it counts as evidence of the intention, but who is a parent and all the case law goes to intention that makes someone a parent, etc. But yes, we do quite a bit of sperm donation in Canada, but again, most of it's imported from the United States. If Canadian intended parents come to the United States for their IVF cycle, does that change any of this at all? Because the law says it's illegal to pay someone to arrange the services of a surrogate mother, or it's, a, or it's illegal to pay a surrogate mother for her services, or it's illegal to purchase OVA from a donor or a person acting on behalf of a donor, that payment's the part that's illegal. So ideally, if possible, that payment shouldn't be made from Canada. And I, it's not about tracing it. It's okay if it can be traced. That's not the question. The question is, does Canada have jurisdiction over that payment or not? So ideally, if you're doing egg donation, even to your own body in the United States, that payment should be made from the United States, or at least not from Canada. And when should intended parents first reach out to a Canadian fertility law attorney to discuss their plans for surrogacy? So because that payment issue comes early, I would first have them have a consultation with the Canadian lawyer, then deal with the American lawyers um, to do all the American surrogacy. And then when they reach, you know, halfway through a pregnancy or so, start preparing for all the citizenship documentation. But I do think permanent residents in particular need to understand the limitations, um, that the fact that their child will not be a citizen automatically of Canada, et cetera. They're just not entitled to that citizenship. So I do think someone should understand that they go forward with the surrogacy in the United States. What are the legal costs at your firm and what services do they cover? The way we end up doing it is flat fee basis. So we do a process whereby we're usually first helping people by introducing them to American surrogacy agents, etc., cetera, uh, who we think are good, talking about the Canadian legal aspects. So for example, in Canada, it's illegal to pay a surrogate and punishable by 10 years in jail and or $500,000. So it's very important that Canadians know how to make uh, any payments that they're making to a surrogacy agency or to a surrogate um, without breaching Canadian law. So we go through that at the beginning with them. Uh, we look over pre-birth orders. We deal with post-birth orders to make sure they're in a wording that's going to be recognized in the, under uh, Canadian law. Um, and then we just help with the uh, ap citizenship application. So usually we charge in Canadian dollars about $4,500, which is probably about... 2,800 American dollars. This has been a conversation with Sarah Cohen from Fertility Law Canada at D2 Law. For more information on the Canadian surrogacy law process, feel free to reach out to Sarah at the information below. And thank you very much for watching. G -S -H -C. <laughs>